Hey everyone, this is Daniel again. In today's video, I'm going to be turning this bolt together trailer into this more of this is off-roading style trailer that I can pull behind my side by side. So with that, let's get started. So in my last video, you saw me put this together. This is a bolt together kit from Northern Tool and it is a 48 long by 40 inch wide uh, kit and a uh, bolt together kit. It does come as a street legal kit, although I did not install those. I might at some point, uh, but as of right now, I don't really see a need for it, so I won't install it because I'm not planning to ever take it on the street. Although as it stands with the kit on it, you can take it and you can, make, you can title it and tag it and put it on the street. Uh, it, the only thing for me is I, I'm going to keep it on the trail, so I just don't think I need to do that. Um, the, the caveat for me was the tires I did not like. Uh, they come with narrow street tires. And it probably would do fine, but I would like something a little bit more wide because it goes over rocks and it's a fairly rocky, muddy area. So I don't want them to sink down into any kind of mud or anything like that, uh, or in just soft uh, soft dirt. So I, I went out also and I purchased these. These are a lot wider, but they're smaller. They're uh, eight inch tires versus the 12 inch tires. I lose some height, but I'm hoping that I won't have an issue with that. We have a plastic, one of those plastic trailers, and it works good. We've taken it all over the mountain. It has smaller tires than this. Uh, I'm gonna run this inch and, inch, and, uh, inch and a quarter tubing all the way along here on both sides, and then I'll put another piece of this on top to go across as well. I'll figure out the, the, the rear end situation, do the same thing on the front, and I'll figure out some gate thing for the rear. Uh, but this, the, the four by eight sheet, they sold it in the entire sheet, was $200, and I did not want to spend $200 for that. Uh, however, these remnant parts was fifty dollars, so we're or sorry, a little under fifty, it's like forty bucks. I plan to use this diamond plate. Got a really good deal. This is also remnant. That's why it doesn't. It's not the exact size, but I can probably make it work. I'll either go with a wood deck, and I have some plywood sitting around. So I'll probably if I if I go that route, I have the wood. If not, I will end up going the diamond plate. It looks a little shinier, but it might get banged up pretty easy. But I will need more strength members. I'm gonna have to run another strength member here and here to support it because it's it's a long span. And with weight, it'll, it'll put rocks and logs and everything else. It'll bend this down. So that would be that. With the wood, I'm less concerned. It can get banged up a lot more. So with that, let's get started. problem I have is it's rubbing right here. Even with a spacer on here, it still rubs right here because this tire is so thick, uh, so wide, and the, and the offset is so much that it's still rubbing right here. So what I need to do is I need to get this slid that way. And I know there's a detent in here, so I don't know if I'll, how much I'll be able to do, but I'll see if I can slide that over. And if I can, great. If I can't, well, then I'll have to worry about cutting the frame. And I'm hoping I don't have to cut the frame, but I'll uh, see what I can do with that. So I've taken the two U-bolts off that hold it up. See, they're down there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to remove this because the other end of this, there's a hole in here. And that basically gives it a, uh, an equal point to uh, to hold onto this. That's mainly uh, to keep this secured to this and also to make sure it tracks right going down the road. Uh, the other thing I've noticed is when I've put this on here and I've stood on this trailer, it does not give, it does not have any bounce. I try to jump up and down on it, it does not bounce at all. So I don't think I'm gonna need all this. This is rated for a little over a thousand pounds for the entire trailer. So I don't need all of this for what I'm gonna be using it for. So I'm gonna probably, I'm gonna remove these two leafs here, which is take that out and then I'm gonna cut this off. I think then we'll have to cut that off. It's the only way to make that happen. We'll see. The main point that it's rubbing on is this right here. So that I don't have a lot of wiggle room because uh, in terms of relocating this without actually cutting the frame and re-welding the frame back up, I would have to basically do all everything I've said here and just move it over and then drill another hole in there and then all this would then be able to slide over. All right, so there's the smaller tire on it. Unfortunately, uh, even with taking that, that piece off, I can't really move this in any further and you can see it's rubbing right here and it's also rubbing on the frame there. So I'm gonna have to do what I initially thought I didn't want to do, and I was gonna cut it. So I was thinking I'd cut here, but I think a smarter thing to do is I'll just cut a half an inch off this side, and then a half inch off this side, and that'll make sure this stay, these bolt holes stay centered, and I don't have to do anything with that. It's not gonna be super fast, but it'll be, I think, the right answer. So I'm gonna get started with that right now.
So I've gone through there and I have shortened up the frame. See, it gives me a little, a lot more clearance back here, which is good. And uh, gives me about well, the thickness of that. So whatever the thickness of that was, which is an inch and change. So I've shortened the width of the trailer by three inches. So I'm gonna put the tires on now and let you, uh, and then we'll look to see if there's any interference between these two points here. Now let you see, there is no interference. We're good, we probably have a, a good half an inch. So what I have here is these are gonna be my four corner posts. They go up, the expanded metal will go between. What I've done is taken a measure of expanded metal, another piece of this tubing, square tubing, another piece of expanded metal, and then a top expanded metal, on, I mean, it's top uh, tubing on top. And I've taken that as the total measurement, plus a little extra just in case. So right now I am ready to start welding up. I just need to make sure these are square and then I'll start welding it up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to tack all four corners, measure diagonal to make sure I'm square. And then I wanna go back and do the finish weld on that afterwards. This is the corner. It's been 40, basically I 45 it, capped it. I'm not gonna touch it because it's a thousand degrees. And then I just ground down the welds, so. All right, so I'm on day three at this point. Uh, I was hoping this would be a weekend project, but I think it's, it's drifting into more about a two weekend project. Uh, so what I'm gonna do right now is these parts, which you saw me weld in a little earlier, uh, I've got them on all four corners in front of the uh, fender wells and behind the fender wells. So what I'm gonna do is I have some, old, it's this uh, one inch expanded metal flattened. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I'm going to use it I, from an older project. I'm going to use it, cut that out. <clears throat> and what that'll do is as branches and things come through here, this bar is pretty strong, but it can get compromised and pushed in. That'll just provide a little bit more structure on the back so that it'll hold it, but it also won't add a lot of weight. I'm trying to be cognizant that this is getting pulled by an ATV and a side by side. I don't want it to weigh a lot. So I'm trying to anywhere I can, you know, kind of shave off weight. I will, 
So expanded metal will be good for that and anything kind of flows through there, it's not a big deal. So I'll do that to all four corners and you see it. Here I'm measuring out the guides, which is a little bit larger tube diameter than the actual gate that I'm making. So all I'm going to do is cut this tube in half and then weld it into place. So I have the top cut, the bottom cut, and the two sides. I'm going to get them square using this magnetic square, tack them together, put them, and go do a dry fit on the trailer to see if everything's square and everything fits as I expect it to be. I've labeled it bottom and top. There is a slight difference in length, mainly because the top of the trailer does sit out a little bit more than the bottom, just by about a quarter of an inch. I can't really fix that. Uh, it's, you know, probably could work on it for a really long time to get square, but it's probably going to get banged up, knocked out anyway. So, uh, and it's, what I'm going to do, like I said, dry fit it, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to put a piece of expanded metal to fill in this void here, and that should be everything I need to do for that. Oh, and I'm going to come back after I've done a finish weld and everything, and 45 of these, or just put a taper on these so that A, it helps it go into the slot a little better, and B, I can put a uh, cap on the end, and that'll allow me to uh, uh, keep any moisture out of the interior of these tubes, and they won't rust from the inside out. All right, so at this point, the trailer's complete, at least, uh, you know, at least mechanically. So all the parts are welded on the frame. I've got the gate welded up as well, the rear, the rear gate. I've also got the edges knocked down where so it won't cut anybody up because we won't have little hands on this. And all the outside welds or anywhere that a weld needed to be knocked down, I've knocked them down with a flat disc. So what's left for me to do is hit this with a uh, wire brush. I'm just gonna have a hand wire brush go through here and hit all this because it is flux core clean it up real good, and then I'm gonna hit it with some primer, and then after the primer, I'm gonna put a two-part epoxy Rust-Oleum uh, bed liner on it. So and at that point, we're finished. And then the last step is gonna to be to put the, the uh, deck boards in here and cut them to length. I've got the deck boards, I got them, went out and got them last night. So we're almost wrapping this thing up, so we're getting close. Here you can see me applying the rest oleum truck bed liner. It's pretty self-explanatory. I didn't make a video about it. It's one bag with a divider in between. You burst the bag into the other bag by rolling it. The two parts mix. You mix it by hand. You turn it back and forth for about two minutes. Let it set for 15, then you can just apply it. Uh, there are a lot of uh, outgassing on this. It's pretty strong odor. So do wear a respirator when you have this. I have a uh, organic uh, you know, filter for this. Other than that, just use the apply tools and roll it on to the texture you want. And uh, it comes out pretty well.
So here is the finished product. I was able to uh, get it out of the shed. It's still drying. I'll probably let it dry a little bit more, cure a little bit more. Uh, taped off through here because, you know, it has some, you know, it's got the serial number on this side, as you can see. Uh, it's got the plate and everything on that side. Uh, so I didn't want to cover that up. And all the front of it was fine. It's powder coat and, you know, zinc plated. So all that's fine for, you know, rust prevention. And then uh, everything else has got that rust oleum truck bed liner on there, which is not too bad for a knockoff version of uh, like a Rhino liner. And it's a roll-on, so it made it nice. So like, as you can see, I also did the deck boards. I had plenty of this left over as an eight by, uh, it was basically built for an eight foot truck bed. So it worked out well, I had plenty left over. So I was able to just apply it to the boards as well. Uh, you know, this turned out like I was wanting it to. So anything that comes through here will get pushed up and around, around these tires. Same thing on the back. If I were to back up, it's going to have the same thing. It will, nothing will catch on the fenders and bend them in. Wider tires, I am certain, will help, you know, get over rocks. I will air them down a little bit more. Right now, I, don't, I think they're at like 25, 30 PSI. And uh, like I said, it's a little tacky, so I left the gate off of it. I didn't want to mess up any of it. I want to give it time. And once this gets completely dry, I'm going to go through here and add some uh, lag bolts. I've got some quarter 20 lag bolts that I'll drill in through the frame, and I'll paint those, paint those holes so they won't rust. And I've got some uh, tie downs for the front and for the rear through here. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. And if you do, give me a like and subscribe and you'll get more content like this. Thanks. Have a good one.